Ahoy there and welcome to Pirate's Parlay. Today we'll be taking a stroll through the print and play game Buried Treasure. This copy was printed on demand from the Game Crafter and provided to us by Carl Jolke Games. Let's get it on the table and start digging. Setup begins by placing the lone dock tile somewhere in the play area. Give each sailor a player board and two ship tokens of the same color. One goes on the dock, while the other marks max health on your ship. Separate the tokens into stacks of cannonballs, powder kegs, plundered tokens, and three values of booty. Also set out the dice. You'll be using these a lot. Shuffle all the decks and place them about. Now when you place the shop cards, deal each player one and check to see if they have any immediate effects. Then deal out a five card storefront area, so you can go shopping later, once you come into some cash. Pick your first player and let's get started. Choose one thing to do on your turn. Explore, sail, or remain. Let's look at explore first. Roll the green die. That's how many tiles you'll be drawing, but one at a time. Pull the first tile and place it adjacent to your current position, then move on to it. If it's clear water, there's nothing to do. Just move on to the next tile, unless you rolled a mere one. If it's an island, draw an island card and check it out. It may gift you easy treasure, or you might have to fight for it. In which case, roll a red attack die and a light blue defense die. Make sure to say which die is which party so no one gets confused. The fight has begun. You, the current player, will win any ties, but first, look for modifiers. The card will have a hand or cannon. This tells you what matter of battle you're engaged in. That card's number is added to its role. If you have any mods of a matching type on your ship, add that in too. If you win, roll the two yellow treasure dice and multiply the results together. Then plunder that amount from the bank. If you lose, roll the black retribution die and lose that item, if you have it. In the case of a question mark, you get to decide, though it must be something you have to lose. In the event that you acquire the treasure on this island, it is now plundered. Add a token so everyone knows. However, anyone can still plunder an island with this token on a future turn. Just roll a d6, that would be the attacker defense die. And on a roll of five or six, draw a new island card and do it all over again. And if there's another player's ship on an island, You'll have to deal with them first, before you can explore it. We'll get to that part in a bit. If you land on a sea creature tile, draw that card and see what you're up against. Almost all of these beasties want to harm you. Conduct your battle in the same way as before, and hope for the best. If it's a pirate, then fight a pirate. You should be an expert by now. If you land on a diving bell, you'll need the diving bell upgrade on your ship. If you don't have it, treat it as clear, empty water. If you do have it, draw a card and hunt that treasure. You may find that there are other requirements before said treasure can be gathered, and the treasure may have an additional modifier for the loot in question. If there is an additional modifier, add it to the results if you roll for treasure. So it's this times this, then times this. <laughs> it's payday, mateys. This area also gets a plunder token, as with the island, and the rules are the same. Also, if another ship is there when you arrive, you'll have to defeat them before interacting, as before. Finally, shop tiles. When you place a new one, discard the cards in the storefront and deal out five new ones. You may spend your booty to take cards onto your ship, putting cannon and hand cards in appropriate spots, up to your max capacity. If you don't like what you see, spend five gold to discard and replace all the cards in the storefront. You also may sell your cards according to their printed value. You can also buy cannonballs for two treasure each if your cards need them, or kegs for five. Or if your ship is in need of repair, spend five to restore one point of health. You can also stash treasure here. Take up to ten points of treasure and move it to your stash. It's safe here, and works toward the end game. But more on that momentarily. And it wouldn't be much of a pirate game without some good old backstabbing PvP action. <laughs> So if you share a space with a fellow buccaneer, you may initiate combat. Each player rolls a die and adds any cannon modifiers. If you win, roll the retribution die and you get that reward from the loser. In case of a tie, each player loses one health. Because cannon fire is bad for you, mate. And you can't attack if you're on a pirate or sea creature tile. 
You gotta deal with them instead. But let's say you're not in a violent mood and you're feeling a little greedy. You can, instead of attacking another player, offer to trade with them. Just raise the white flag and broker a deal for cards, tokens, whatever. But if that deal goes south, either player can raise the black and call for combat. Hey, at least you gave peace a chance. So rather than exploring, you could instead choose on your turn to sail. Which means you roll the dark blue sailing die and move that many spaces over existing tiles. However, you cannot move onto the same tile twice in a turn, so nice try. You must stop to deal with pirates or sea monsters if you land on one. And if you choose to interact with a diving bell, island, shop, or dock, you can sail no further afterward. You may also occasionally get a pirate or a storm result. Handle the pirate as before. But if you roll storm, draw a card and roll the exploration die. Any other ships within that distance of you are affected as well. But before you blow away, roll the combat dice and battle the squall. If you win the roll, Move the number of spaces indicated. But if you lose, you move and roll retribution. That was an angry storm. The final option on your turn is remain. This means that you see something shiny and wish to stick around to check it out. Or let's say you were unsuccessful on an island and wanted to try again next turn. You can only do this one time in a row, unless a card says otherwise. And if you just did battle with a pirate or a sea beastie on your last turn, you cannot remain. Now with all of this shooting and cutlassing going on, here's a quick note about death. If your health drops to zero, you must do a few things. Discard any ship or hand items, unstash treasure and ammo. Then move your ship back to the dock and get a new shop card. Your old self is dead, and you now portray a foolish descendant on the path to vengeance. And if victory be your goal, and really why wouldn't it be, it's achieved by stashing 100 or more points of treasure. But there are a few rules for this. As previously mentioned, you can stash up to 10 treasure at the shop per turn, but that's a bit slow. At the dock, you can deposit any amount, as well as make a withdrawal if need be. In fact, the last 20 treasure you deposit must be done here to initiate Endgame. Whoever does this ends their last turn, and any other players get one last shot at stashing as much as they can before the game is over and the coins be counted. Obviously, the highest total wins. If there's a tie, sell your stuff and try again. Or settle it with a good old-fashioned sea battle. Pirate to pirate. One thing to note about this game is that it's free. You can download all the files from Board Game Geek and print it out yourself for just the cost of the ink and paper. Building games like this is a hobby, with lots of practitioners who give lots of helpful advice. If you were to purchase a copy, such as this one, that comes pre-assembled, you'd end up paying a bit more than you would for a similar mass-produced copy. Not to mention all the tiles need a wipe down from the soot that comes from the cutting process they use. Just so you know. However, if you want to skip all that and just try it out right now, you can head for your computer and play it on Tabletopia. But let's talk about the game itself. It looked fairly simple at first, and it is. But if you use too much common sense, you may overlook a rule or two. Because for a game made of such simple elements, there are a lot of little rules to keep track of. So we made a sheet of reminders for this one, and it just kept growing. However, even though an action such as the storm may have a few more steps than it seems to need, those steps come from a storytelling place, so I get why they're there. And we recommend using the variant in-game condition if things start getting a little repetitive for you, or if you end up with a runaway leader. Just play to 50 instead of 100. Same experience, just shorter. Overall, we liked it once we got the hang of things. It's not the most immersive open-world sailing game you'll ever play, but we saw lots of room for added depth. In fact, there's a Contracts expansion already, though we haven't added it in yet. Buried Treasure could use a tweak here and there, and perhaps a graphical upgrade in a few places, but it's a competent sea exploration and battle game that may continue to improve over time. It looks like the designers are pretty ambitious with their catalog of games. We'll be keeping an eye on them in the future. Thanks for watching this Pirates Parlay, and we'd love for you to hit that subscribe button to stay aboard as we explore the mysterious corners of the gaming shelf. Stop back in soon for more. We're sure you'll dig it.